Hello and welcome to our latest video in our sustainability perspective series, complementing the sustainability awards and the sustainable packaging summit. We're sharing interviews with thought leaders from across the packaging value chain. On the path to sustainability and circularity, sorting and recycling, of course, plays a key role. One of the major players in the industry is Tom Rowe, an expert in sensor-based sorting and recycling solutions. With me today is Nick Tumuren, uh, Tom Rowe's SVP for Marketing and Communications Circular Economy. We will discuss what goes into creating a holistic waste management system, the importance of collaboration and creating closed loops for recyclers, making the circular economy a global topic. And we'll also explore optimization and digitalization of waste management. So yeah, welcome, me too. Thank you very much for uh, joining me today. Thanks. Thanks for asking. Mm, welcome. Okay. Um, so yeah, to start us off, could you tell us a bit more about Tomra's work in the area of sorting and recycling? Sure, I'll be happy to. So as you might know, Tomra was um, was founded in 1972 in a field that we call today reuse, oddly enough. Um, so reverse vending. Basically, uh, in Norway, it's where the firm, uh, the company started, um, where we were collecting glass milk bottles. These were being washed and they were being reused. Since then, uh, Tomra has expanded globally. So we're in 80 markets worldwide and with uh, over 100 installations. And of course, this is not only recycling. This is, includes collections, recycling, food and mining. We've been in this. Let's, let's call it the, the circular waste management industry for over 50 years now and focus on collections and sorting. Basically, we just, we help the world recycle. Yeah, sounds like you're, um, you're really the experts. I'm looking forward to um, gaining a bit more insights. Um, so yeah, could you tell me a bit more about what would a holistic waste management system look like and how is Tom Rowe going about building it? Sure. And so we just launched this, but, but per perhaps before we talk about that, I'd like to take just a step back. We believe very, very strongly in the waste hierarchy. So where we start with reduce, reducing the amount of packaging that's, that's out there, reusing um, as much as possible. And you see this now with the trends of refillables and, and general return of, of uh, packaging. And then recycling. Um, we feel that we really, the, the time to act is now. And while reduce and reuse are very important, it's going to take some time to get there. Recycling is something that we can do now, which is why we also um, initiated a study, a recent study that was carried out by Unomia to look at what we've come to call now the holistic resource system. And what this system does is it combines three existing waste management systems. And I'll get to that in a moment. What the study found was that an optimized waste management system can actually impact in a huge way, and that's, that's 2.76 billion tons of carbon um, CO2 emissions can be reduced if we, if we implement this in the correct way globally. So what is it? That was your initial question, I think, what it is. Mm -hmm. uh, so the three waste management systems are um, the DRS, so deposit return system, separate source of specific waste streams and mixed waste sorting. Um, perhaps it makes sense for me to go into all three of those individually a bit. Okay. Mm, yes. So DRS or de deposit return, return systems, this is something, this is where we started. So this is where we have the most experience, obviously. And what we found uh, in our practical experience as well, as what was found in the study is that with these systems in place that on average 90% of uh, beverage containers are collected. And that's, that's huge. There's no other collection system that can do this uh, as effectively. In addition to, be able to, to being able to collect the most material, what it also helps to do is obviously by collecting material, it's not left to the environment. So it reduces littering, um, which is leakage into whether it's marine or land-based uh, environment. Um, and also because of the purity this, of the material that is returned, it has the highest possible recyclable content. So that's DRS. And we see this, uh, it's been very, uh, the markets have been quite, quite limited, but we see that the markets are coming more and more in Europe and also globally. Then uh, I mentioned separate source for specific, uh, specific material streams. These would be things such as textiles, uh, e-waste, 
paper, and of course, organic, uh, mm -hmm. and sometimes glass. And why, why only these? The reason is that uh, we want to ensure the purity of material streams, which in turn then ensures that the, the likelihood that these materials will be recycled. So paper that has been somehow mixed, mixed with organic, it's very difficult to get the pulp out of this material. So we want to separate those. Mm -hmm. what's, what's interesting is that we have found through this study, it's not necessary to separate plastics or packaging, which leads me into mixed waste sorting. Um, and mixed waste sorting, specifically here, we are talking about sorting prior to incineration and or landfill. We lose so much packaging through um, incineration and landfill, just because if there's a separate source in place, we might have a situation where things are landing up in the wrong bins, or there is no separate collections in place and it's landing up in residual waste. And what happens, it gets burned or it gets lost in landfill. And if we stick to burning, um, recovering this material out before that um, saves CO2 actually twice. If we're burning plastics, of course, we're burning fossil fuels. And I don't think I need to go into what that means. It's mm. not necessarily great. <laughs> um, and if we're recovering materials to be recycled later, we are saving that virgin material usage, which also um, just through the production also increases the CO2 emissions. So that's the idea behind the holistic resource system. Um, and we have, it's not only theory, actually, we've, especially this last part, we put into place mixed waste sorting. We have 10 facilities uh, in which, we, which we've been doing this already in the Netherlands, um, I believe in Norway and, and other areas throughout the world. And we do see it is possible to collect a massive amount of material. Hmm, sounds, uh, sounds really interesting. Thank you. Um, and obviously, um, for all this, I might imagine that um, collaborations are really important because I guess Tom wouldn't be able to um, do all this on their own. Um, could you tell me a bit more about that, how it works with the, with the collaborations? Sure, and that's exactly right. Uh, we are not, and we know this, uh, we are not able to do this on our own. And it's important that we collaborate across the value stream. We've done this in the past, but of course we've intensified those efforts. Um, it's difficult for, for, let's say a package designer to know how to design for recycling if they're not aware of what happens, uh, how are these, these materials sorted? How are they recycled? And then of course, they're in a better, better position to, to design for recycling. So we work with converters, we work with brand owners, we work with retailers, and of course, recyclers and the sorters and the waste management industry in general. We need to come together and uh, yeah, your summit, for example, proves that working together and collaborating is the best way and the most effective way and the quickest way to mm -hmm. get to a circular economy. We must, we must work together, we must speak with one another. Mm, absolutely, yes. Yeah, we, uh, we, we hope we are playing a little part as well in um, facilitating that information sharing. Definitely. I think it might be more than a little. Mm. So thank you, thank you for your efforts <laughs> as well. Mm. That's uh, very great to hear that, uh, that we're having an impact, definitely. <laughs> And um, yeah, I'd like to look a bit closer again at the uh, at the recyclers. And um, I was wondering what steps can be taken or are already being taken to create closed loops for recycle loop for recyclers. Um, yeah, there there are several factors. What we've found, um, I think, or we think that the the most important or where we need to start is legislation. And we see a lot of this happening, obviously in Europe with the Green Deal. We also see it in the US. It's almost like we're outbidding each other, but that's, this is a good thing to outbid each other in this area. So we see things such as the plastics tax in the Europe. We see things such as increasing recycling content requirements. And all of this is necessary to form a framework for creating a market for the recyclers. So in, in the marketplace, of course, you need to have supply, but you also need to have demand. And this legislation helps to create demand um, for recyclers. So then, where does the supply come from? Um, and this is a challenge that we are finding and uh, we are hoping through the holistic resource system, it will, it will support in solving this. So increasing feedstock, the material is out there. We just have to collect it and we have to, to sort it and recycle it properly. Which brings me to, um, yeah, bringing it up to the highest possible quality of recycling, which we've been able to do 
through our new plant, our demonstration plant in Landstein, Germany. I don't know, perhaps you've heard of it. It's a, it's a joint venture yeah, between yes. Tamra and Borealis and Simmel, mm -hmm. uh, where we've actually been able to produce very, very high quality across a, a multitude of materials. Mm -hmm. um, and this is also extremely important. If you're going to have recycled content, it needs to be good content and pure mm -hmm. content. And uh, this is where we've been successful. Mm, absolutely, yes. And um, yeah, I was also wondering, um, obviously it's um, going you know, fairly well in, in Europe with um, circular economy and recycling, although more could still be done, but um, um, I'd imagine it's also important to make the circular economy a global topic. And I was wondering uh, what Tomra does to facilitate this. Uh, absolutely, it is very important. In, in fact, it's a small world and it's getting smaller. Um, whether we see China closing its doors um, to imports of it, and rightfully so, um, and other countries closing the doors, we we all are impacted um, with what's happening in different parts of the world. So it can't be an encapsulated situation or or system. We need to work together um, to make circular economy a global topic, and we do this. Uh, we are, as I've said, we we are in eighty markets worldwide, um, and we're working with all of these players in the value chain also globally. So we, we have partners that we work with in Asia and in the US and in other parts of the world outside of Europe in order to, to facilitate actually moving to a circular economy globally. That doesn't mean that one system works in all, it's, it's not a one size fits all uh, system. Um, and it's more of a, I guess we could call it a global system. So it's a global mm. system, a global model that can be localized. And that's, mm. we, we feel the best way to go at it. Mm, definitely, yeah, that sounds like a, like a good for, way forward for sure. And um, yeah, finally, I was wondering, are there any innovations you'd like to talk about that facilitate the optimization and digitalization of waste management, which, which obviously is um, an important way forward to um, improve systems? Yeah, of course. Um, in the past, we started, of course, with color detection with cameras. And then we moved to NIR sensors where we looked at material detection. And now we are expanding uh, to the next step is with uh, artificial intelligence, which of course we've used with the sensors in the past, but we're taking it to the next level with deep learning um, and actually object identification. So not only identifying is this a white HTPE shampoo bottle or is this a white HTPE whatever, we can now identify it with object identification. So that's one thing that, uh, that we are working on to develop. Also, you have probably heard of innovations and projects such as Holy Grail and PRISM that look uh, are very central and key to looking at the differences between food grade and non-food grade. We've been intensively involved with these as well. Um, in terms of digitalization, we have a product or an offering, we call it Insight, where, which is used uh, to connect machines, uh, giving big data, lots of data to the decision makers so that they can best make the decisions to keep the plant running, to keep everything optimized, to enhance the purity and the amount of material that's actually recovered uh, so that we can move more quickly to a closed loop. And, and there's lots of work to be done there, most definitely. Mm -hmm. But we, again, there, we are collaborating with our partners to, to enhance this so that we can serve them best. Hmm, great, thank you. Yeah, it looks like there's some really interesting um, work happening and interesting developments also in the pipeline. So we'll be uh, looking forward to, to watching this space for sure. <laughs> Thanks very much. So yeah, that brings us to the end of uh, today's interview. Um, thank you very much for sharing the insights with you, Amita. It was great to find out a bit more about uh, what Tomra does. Thank you very much for having us. And uh, yeah, thank you everybody for watching. Please subscribe to Packaging Europe or follow us on LinkedIn or Twitter if you'd like to keep up to date with upcoming discussion panels, interviews and commentary as part of our ongoing online events for the Sustainable Packaging Summit. Thank you.